Welcome back to the Edmonds School District Automotive Technology Training Center. This is Hot Rod High School. And in today's episode, we are going to take a look at performing a leak down test on a four-cylinder engine. Um, the leak down test is the companion to the compression test. Uh, once you find a cylinder with poor compression readings in it, you'd use this leak down test to pinpoint where that compression is leaking out of. And so we're going to perform the test and we'll also talk about the various areas where you might find the compression leaking. Okay, coveralls on, safety glasses on. Let's go to work. So for step number one, we're gonna calibrate the gauge. This has to be done prior to every single time that we test any of the cylinders. In order to calibrate the gauge, we're first going to take and pull downward. So normally this will be locked upward, but we'll pull downward on this little tab right here. And we're going to take and turn it all the way counterclockwise as far as it goes until it stops. So once that regulator has been turned all the way counterclockwise until it stops, now we can hook up the air supply. Never hook up the air supply with this still engaged or not turned all the way because we could damage the gauge by doing that. Okay, so now we can hook up our air supply to it to do our gauge calibration. To hook up the air supply, we're gonna take the air hose, we'll pull back on the collar, we'll insert the air connector from the gauge into the air hose, push inward, let go of the collar and now it's hooked up. In order to calibrate it, we'll take now the dial or the, uh, the regulator, we're gonna turn it and watch as this needle over here, right now it's at 100% and we're going to continue turning it until it reaches that zero right past over here in yellow where it says set. So, Continue turning it. And then we wanna go slowly toward the end. We don't wanna go past set. And just a little more, we're gonna call that close enough for our ability to measure the leakage in our engine. So it's now set up and we're ready to start the test. So in order to test our leakage, we need our piston to be sitting at top dead center. And we need to make sure both of our valves are closed. Now there are some more pinpoint tests that we can do where our uh, piston would be at different uh, locations. But for our purposes here, we need to set it to top dead center. So I'm going to use a wrench on the crankshaft pulley bolt to be able to rotate our engine over to set up to top dead center. I'll give you guys a look at what the piston looks like as it's moving up into position while we rotate the engine. So now as I rotate the crankshaft around, we will see the piston come up to the top of the cylinder I want to get it right up to top dead center, the very highest position that the piston can go. So if we watch as I just take that wrench and push down on the crankshaft and rotate the crankshaft around, the piston is going to be traveling up in the cylinder. And we get it up to that top dead center position. Hopefully you'll be able to see it on the camera there as it reaches that position. Oh, we're almost there. There we go. I think we are just about at, and you see it's starting to travel back down. So we'll get it right there. Now we're at that top dead center position and we are ready to insert the, uh, the adapter into the cylinder. Now because 
Sometimes as the air pressure goes into the engine, it'll actually get the uh, piston to travel downward in the cylinder and throw off our readings. And this engine's actually been set up so that we can lock it into place so it won't move. So once we have that piston at top dead center, go ahead and clamp down with this vice grip that's mounted onto the back. And now the engine won't be able to rotate and we can perform our test. Just like in that compression test, we will install our adapter into place, tighten it in as tight as we can go by hand. And now we can install the compression or the leak down test gauge onto our engine. Okay, to hook up the leak down tester, we'll take the hose on the end of the gauge, just like installing that um, airline onto the tester earlier, we pull back on the collar and then install it into the end of the adapter. And we see that we have very low leakage on this particular cylinder. And now we would listen for where that leakage was coming out of. We would know that if we heard leakage coming out of the exhaust pipe right here, that would tell us that we had probably a, a bad exhaust valve or a bad exhaust valve seat that was causing our low compression reading for this engine if we had one. If we listen at the intake, we open up the throttle and listen there. And if we hear, so, and actually, yeah, you can hear a little bit coming out of there, not much, but a little, that would tell us that we had a bad intake valve. Um, if you listen at the radiator or the radiator hoses, or if you see bubbles forming in the coolant while doing this test, that could tell you that you had a crack in the block or a crack in the cylinder head. You could have a crack in an intake manifold, or you could have uh, a likely one is also a blown head gasket that could cause that reading. So if I'm listening, so right here is a coolant pipe. And if I'm listening at that coolant pipe, and I'm hearing any kind of a, uh, um, you know, air moving through there, that's probably telling me that there's something wrong with the cooling system. Now there's always gonna be some leakage past the piston rings. And you listen for that by listening at the dipstick tube. So if I open up the dipstick tube, oh, and I could actually feel air come out of this one. And so, yeah, that definitely tells me that the dip, uh, the piston rings are the most major source of leakage on this engine, which makes a lot of sense. This engine's never been run before. So it doesn't, uh, the rings haven't had a chance to properly seat. And so the leakage it does have, which we're reading about 15% leakage, which is a very good leak down number. And it would be coming out of the piston ring. So on my paper, when I'm uh, figuring out this out, I would mark down 15% leakage and I would circle rings as the leakage location. Okay, really quick, let's take a look at the process of doing this on the rest of the cylinders. It's just a, a repeat of what we just did here on cylinder number one. So we've disconnected the gauge from the engine. We're taking a look at is the needle still in that set area, which it is, so that looks good. So now we're ready to get the engine rotated over so that we can start up on cylinder number two. So now go back to the back of the engine and release the vice grip that was holding the engine in place. And now you can get your wrench out and spin the crankshaft over while watching piston number two as it climbs up to top dead center. Okay, just like on cylinder number one, I'm on cylinder number two now. I'll simply rotate the crankshaft over until we see that piston climb all the way to the top and it's almost there. And 
there we are with the piston up as high as it'll possibly go. And once again, we will take and lock our vice grip down so that the engine cannot rotate from this position. Now insert the adapter. A little bit hard to do, trying to stay out of the way of the camera there. Okay, all the way tight. And now we can hook up our gauge and get our readings. Okay, just like last time, pull back the collar, put it onto the adapter, put it back in place, get your reading on that colorful gauge there. How much cylinder leakage do we have? And now I need to listen at all the different locations. So open up my throttle and listen to how much air is moving out past the intake valve. Listen down here at the exhaust and find out how much air is leaking here past the exhaust valve. Listen over here where my radiator hose would hook up and try to determine if there's any leaks in the cylinder block, the cylinder head or the head gasket. And then also check the dipstick to see if we have leakage past the rings. And now, once again, wherever you found the most leakage, you would circle that area on your paper and then also write in the amount of leakage that you discovered at that cylinder. Now we can go through and do the last couple of cylinders. Okay, to do the last couple of cylinders, first remove your clamp off of the back of the engine. Take and disconnect the air supply to that cylinder. Now you can look down cylinder number three. And while you're looking down cylinder number three, go through and crank the engine over until that piston reaches top dead center. Almost there. Okay, we are at top dead center. Once again, Hook up the clamp that goes on the back of the engine just to make sure that the engine can't move. We'll now thread in our adapter into the next cylinder. Now grab that leak down tester, hook it up to the cylinder. And once again, try and find the percentage of leakage on this gauge here, the one that says cylinder leakage on it. And once again, open up the throttle, listen for air movement there. Listen for air movement here at the exhaust. Listen for air movement here at the dipstick. Listen for air movement here at the radiator hose connection and then continue on with the next cylinder. So we'll take and once we've recorded down all our results, go ahead and take the air pressure off. Take our adapter out. We can remove the clamp from the back take our wrench and move and position the um, crankshaft so that we can see the piston at top dead cylinder for number four.
Okay, we got that piston up at top dead center, prepared for the test. Once again, now that we have our piston in position, lock down the clamp, thread in the adapter. Hook up the leak down tester. And looks like we have found a source of some leakage here. So check out that intake valve. Check out the exhaust valve. Check for the rings. And also check at the uh, linkage for the radiator hose. So now you'd record down what your linkage number was. You would also record down uh, so what your leakage percentage was and where you found that leakage coming out of. And that's it, performing a leak down test on this four cylinder engine. Now, as you're finishing up, Put the tester away. One thing I need to make sure that you guys do here is take the regulator and turn that knob counterclockwise as far as it'll go. Until the other side over here, the pressure gauge. So this one is a cylinder leakage gauge. Once the pressure gauge reads zero, now it's safe to unhook it from the shop air supply. And you can now put all of your equipment away.